Riders ready, watch the gate. Hey, welcome back to the Dirty Knobs Podcast. I'm your host, Hollywood Mike Miranda, and my co-host, as always, JV James Vicente and EC Eric Carter. Today's special guest, oh man, what a treat, Stompin' Stu Thompson. That's right, the Supreme Commander of BMX. Uh, greatest rider in my time, but hey, listen, great guy to have as a friend too. Let me tell you right now, this is going to be a gas. Stick around to the end. We've got some new commercials and uh, one more big announcement to make. Yep. Dirty Knobs live event. The Legends of BMX coming soon. Anyway, check it out. Enjoy the show. Hey, and support the podcast. Go on to DirtyKnobs.com. Buy a t-shirt. Buy a hat. Show us some love. Don't forget to subscribe and share, like, whatever you got to do, and spread the words, dirty knobs. And now, time for the show. My favorite part was, put your hamburger down so you can talk. <laughs> put your hamburger down, Joy. Get your ass in here. I was having all kinds of difficulty over here. Oh, Ooh, nice hat, bro. No, no, he's got difficulties. He's got difficulties. It's difficulties. Oh, look at that hat. That's merch. Well, you, you, yours is in the mail. Yay! No, it's not. Yours, you, yours probably come tomorrow. That's right. Yeah. See, Stickers I sent and them patches too. I Checks in the mail. Yeah, on I the got same you. day. I sent them Stickers on the same day. And patches, bro. Well, it's because you. That's because where you live, Hollywood. The, it takes a while to put the stuff on the pack horses and get to you. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth it. It's, it's worth, worth it. well they probably you know if they if they went through california those pack horses got <laughs> robbed or so they went through him and they stole the package <laughs> they, they stole they stole the hooves they stole the, hooves. They jacked like the hooves. converters they stole the hooves for the metal <laughs> hey jv what are you doing right now trying to open up this sauce on his hamburger hold on, hold on. Trying to open up this whiskey thing i He's know what you're doing this. listen this is what you're doing He's putting <laughs> sauce on his hamburger is what he's doing. <laughs> Look at this. I did have a hamburger for dinner, though. That's real. Of course you did. That's real. Oh, yeah. Dude, I wanted to see how much I wanted to see how much is left in EC's bottle. Mine? Yeah. Does he even have any in there? Did he order a second? <laughs> did you get a second bottle? I'm down to the strap. Look at this. Dude, JV, look. Wow, you are. <laughs> he's at a half tank. <laughs> <You're after that. laughs> Damn! Hey, whiskey's made for drinking, boys. Dude, this sounds like a commercial. Shit. It is. I shared it with my neighbor, and he loved it. Dude, and before school or after school? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! <laughs> I will tell you, dude. This is this is a fine beverage, dude. This is like filled to the top. Brother, yeah. look at this. I went pro. I, I ordered the I ordered the big ice cube tray. That's pretty good. Hey, do you easy. think these I guys got a, I got a glass without a, somebody else's logo on it, JV? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh well, and you you lost points on that. You gained yeah. points and then you lost points. Hey, do I do I need my headphones or what? Does it Probably. sound good? I don't, I'm not. Yeah, sure. Huh? Yeah, sure. Put them on. Got the V on that. Yeah, Whoa. there it is. But no ice. I'm too lazy. <laughs> too lazy. He's drinking, neat. He's drinking smells, it neat. Smells like there's a, it smells like chocolate. Hey, weren't you on the last episode? Yeah, but I didn't, <laughs> I didn't believe you guys. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Dingleberry, we're waiting on you. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. All right, boys. Cheers. I said it before, I'll say it again. Dangerous good. It is dangerous yeah. good. It's, uh, that's what my neighbor said. He tried it and he said, wow, man, that's dangerous. I said, yeah. yeah. 
Wow, that's a you, did you say that's a big word for a seven year old? I did. <laughs> I did. Now get out of my room. <laughs> oh, so leave the candy. God. Leave the so candy. Bad. <laughs> leave that candy that I brought oh. you. With. You don't get to take the candy home. So so stop in stew. Yeah. How about that, wow. right? The supreme commander of BMX. Yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, you know, as when we first talked about doing this, he was top of the list. Top of the list, dude. Yeah. Top I told him, hey, JV, I was yeah. early today. I was early. I know. I dude. saw you guys texting each other. I, 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 I started setting my stuff up at 515, the lights and got the studio all going. <laughs> oh, hey, there oh, it is. hey. Oh. <laughs> the next button i was going to hit was host begging you to start your video <laughs> there he is <laughs> yes <laughs> so oh wait a minute i got my well uh, if i keep my readers on then i can see myself but i see myself every day so but I <laughs> all right oh, do it how you want Stu. okie dokie smokey we're in all business right. <laughs> Well, the supreme commander of BMX. Is there someone else on here? That was <laughs> probably the, to me, the most iconic nickname. Stomp and Stew. What else? Oh, hey, wait. Let's let's start with a, a cheers. Yes. All right. <laughs> what what cheers, was that? Is, that? is that Coke with I, dirty ice or what? That is whiskey in the wild. That's okay, whiskey well, in the wild, Stu. <laughs> Well, uh, Stuart Thompson, uh, in my opinion, the greatest BMX racer ever, certainly in my time, uh, the GOAT. Um, we were all, it's the first time that we've all been early. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just because it was you, you know, the utmost respect. Um, oh, stop and I, it. And I do, no, I'm not stopping, man. Not Seriously, Stu, I'm telling you, man, <laughs> Hollywood couldn't believe it. I was setting up probably 30 minutes in advance, man. And normally I'm the last guy cramming stuff into the plugs and getting my headphones on. <laughs> Well, hair is I, still wet. Well, I, I knew. Yeah, his, I knew, his hair is usually was, wet when he starts. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I want to start with saying uh, before we do anything else, I want to thank you, Stuart Stu Thompson, for your uh, for your service in law enforcement for keeping us safe and free. Uh, thank you. Utmost respect for you for that. All right. Well, I, I've been out of that now since 2018. Well, and, uh, I can't so even believe. Of, go ahead. No, I can't believe that I've been retired since 2018. It just seems like yesterday. Well, um, you know, you're a BMX hero, but doing that makes you an all-around hero. I mean, the hero to us all. Thank yeah, you. Well, sure. Thank you. Yeah, my yeah. pleasure. It was fun. So, uh, so I'm going to start right off with, did you ever see any BMXers behind bars? Uh, I did. You don't have to name no, names unless you no, don't want no, to. No, I don't, I, don't <laughs> I don't know their names. Um, I was doing a cell search once, and this guy had a BMX action magazine in his cell. So, but I, I didn't really, uh, you know, say who I was, but I think some, there's a couple people that were in custody that knew who I was. It did. I was just going to ask you, did yeah. anyone ever see your badge and then look over and see Thompson and put uh, it all together? Uh, yeah. Well, there's a funny story. A, par a partner of mine was doing a bike stop in the, at old dark 30 and uh, some dude, he hit on the sidewalk. And so I came in as his backup and, so I was standing behind the guy and my partner was talking to him. He's like, you know, Hey, you know, you're, you're you know, it's two o'clock in the morning. You ride, you know, alongside the street, no lights, you know, brakes, no, you know, whatever, you know, name and horsepower and stuff. And he says, well, this isn't normally the bike I ride. I usually have like a, I don't know, let's just say I, I got like a GT pro performer or something, you know, I used to, you know, race back in the day. And he started throwing out names and stuff. And he said, yeah, there's this guy named Stu Thompson. And my partner looks over his shoulder at me. And is, he turns around, like I go, I pointed at my name badge, and he's like, uh, oh, never mind, I didn't play a race against you. <laughs> but yeah, so he, oh, he actually know, he, said he raced against you. I, I think so. It was a long time ago, but the partner I was working with, he's, he was a total kookster and he loved playing with people, and it was fun. We had a good time. <laughs> Can that. you imagine being arrested by Stuart Thompson? Yeah. Yeah, uh, I was gonna, well, that's what I was going to ask. Any, any, not, well, I mean, Hollywood kind of asked it, but it been on any calls on any notable guys that, that we would know. Uh, you know, Rick Thorne. 
And it was funny though, because I just started listening to a couple of his podcasts uh, last week and it was pretty funny. He was telling some really, I like the stories he tells. He's got, especially, especially his last one. I don't know if you saw his last one, but where he flipped over the bars or something, racked his nuts on the stem or bar pad or something. And <laughs> the, the, the podcast was like, tore my urethra. And I'm like, oh, geez. <laughs> but it was funny, especially when he talked about having a catheter. When I had my prostate cancer, I had a catheter in there, so I could relate because you know, you tug on that thing, it, it ain't coming out. It hurts. <laughs> oh. Dude, every guy that's watching this video right now just went like this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, just pulled well, up on the bars. Ooh, I well, I uh, forgot what my whiskey was. Right. On to the next topic. <laughs> All right. Uh, I, I do want, I have a topic I want. I, I have a couple of notes, believe well, it or but, not. But actually, there's probably no topic. Let's just, let's ramble like all the other podcasts I've heard of yours. That's how we do it. That's how we do it. So, hey, Eric, Eric, the last time I saw you, Eric, was that at the opening of the Temecula pump track? Yes. Okay. You yeah. doing a lot of riding still, Stuart? Oh, yeah. I ride probably, you know, if I could get away with it, I'd ride every day. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, you know, it's fun though, but, you know, because I mean, I'm down to, I'm down to probably almost the same weight as I was in 1984 at the height of my BMX career, about 185 or 190. So I feel, I feel good, but I am, I am looking pretty skinny. Yeah. <laughs> Can you guys remember what's your first recollection of Stu Thompson? Oh, man, my... Either one of you. Hey, can you can you guys like go to a commercial or something? My dog's barking at the door, oh. and I gotta let it out. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. All right, go to like go to a whiskey commercial oh, or tell stories or something. You know what? When he leaves, you know what we're gonna sing? Oh Stu, God! Let the dogs out. <laughs> All right, I'll be right back. <laughs> Okay, now that he's gone, I'm gonna talk some shit on him. There you go. Oh, dude, I have a, I have, a, I have a story to tell dude. about him. Yeah, oh yeah. I don't know if he's gonna like it or not, but I'm gonna tell a story. I'm gonna tell on him about one thing he did. You know, he's such a clean cut guy, and he always has been. No, no trouble, no drinking, no nothing like that. I got a story on him. All right. So the question is to my friends: Your first recollection of Stu Thompson. Whether it be magazine at a race, anything. Magazine for sure. For yeah. sure. Yeah. I mean, because the only East Coast race, big East Coast race at the time, I mean, was was the East Coast National at Braddock. That's you and that was my dog. It. East Coast Braddock. No, that That's that was it. That was the only one we had. So everything, everything uh until I started traveling was seeing Stuart in magazines or, or there. So you're too young for the la the first time we came through probably back in 78 or something like that. I think we were in uh Vineland, New Jersey. Yeah. I know, I know the track, but um, yeah, that was, I, I hadn't just started yet. In yeah, my, <clears throat> my bike got stolen. I think the weekend before when we were in New York or something like that. And Wait, then, what bike uh, was that? What, what bike was that, Stu? That was, I think it was just one of my mongooses. Or was it, it the one a, with, the Heine, could, could with the Heineken sticker on the head tube? Uh, could be. I don't know. Yeah, it could have been. But anyways, um, <laughs> I just wonder if both dogs came in. Was that they a stock did. bike, by the way? It was their, if it was the mongoose, it was their long version. So okay. um, they made, you know, they made longer versions for like myself and John George and stuff like that. I don't know if it was ever a production bike, but um, I, it got stolen when I think we were somewhere in the New York area. And um, man, there was some great fan base out there. They, they hunted this dude down for like a week and they found it and I got my bike back. And that no was the way. one. And, and that was the one that had that big honking brake lever on it. I mean, it was completely intact. <laughs> and so, so, so then I raced it at the, the violin, the violin track, and ended up winning. That was fun. St mm. Stu, we're all laughing because I copied that brake lever. I tried yeah. it for one weekend and I hated it, <sighs> and I sold it to Robbie Morales. Yeah, Robbie, the owner of Colt BMX. Okay, he talks about it all the time. <laughs> 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 Stu Thompson's monster. 
big motorcycle brake lever on. I know that. The pe- people always try to like, oh, you know, they'll make a they'll make like a reproduction bike of something I race, and they'll like, yeah, I got his Honda brake lever on there. I'm like, dude, it wasn't even a Honda. I got it at my Suzuki shop, and it was like in a plastic bubble wrap zip tied to cardboard. It was steel. Like I kept the little round knob. Every time I would fall, it would break off and I, I would keep brazing it back on because, you know, when high school I took metal shop, so I knew how to weld. So I just, I would always, you know, braze it back on, but yeah, that was a cool lever. I love it. EC, what about you? First time? Uh, mm, First recollection? Well, I mean, I, I, I'm thinking probably Cook Brothers Classic. Irvine? Yep. I'm thinking Cook Brothers Classic. I didn't really, before that, I didn't really know, uh, you know, 78, I was doing BMXL stuff, but I was like beginner and I wasn't really aware of who was what. And I don't think you did a lot of BMXL stuff. No. And so I remember because Pistol Pete was always like the fast guy in BMXL stuff, but 79, 79 uh, Cook's Classic, I think it was nine. Yeah, I think that's why I ran. They did a cruiser class and I had my Schwinn 26 inch beach cruiser with Cook mm-hmm. Brother bars and a like a tuck neck. That was, yeah. that was, that was fun. I, I want to tell you mine. Mine is a little different. I love it. I, I, knew, uh, I knew of Stu Thompson before I saw Stu Thompson. I had heard from somebody else about Stu Thompson before I met Stu Thompson. And, uh, what it was is I grew up in the neighborhood with Kevin McNeil and Leo Green, two pros from the seventies. One was a, was a pretty good rival of Stewart's. I'd say. Leo uh, wasn't that fast. Was he? <laughs> oh, Oh, Kevin. Kevin. Okay. <laughs> so Kevin McNeil, who ABA is one of the, one of the, one of the first pro ABA number one pros. Um, he, he and Leo would practice in the field right by my house. And I would go out there as a little kid, you know, as a youngster, nobody just watching her practice and they would say okay we're going to beat Stu to the first turn and they would take off pedaling down this hill and turn and they would just they always said it we're gonna we gotta beat Stu we gotta be it was Stuart gotta beat Stuart gotta beat Stuart and they would practice against each other and they would say that like like a mantra but between we gotta beat Stuart gotta beat Stuart and I didn't know who this Stuart guy was but then one weekend uh the first one of the first weekends they I went to an NBA race at uh Corona Downhill Stu Thompson came and I was like, holy cow, this guy is a giant. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was probably 12 years old and I was like, holy cow, this guy is that seriously a, a big man. I usually yeah. keep <laughs> man on a bicycle. I was like, wow, so impressed. And uh, I remember that you used to hang out with uh, with Dennis Dane. Uh, you yeah. guys would park on the side of the hill. Yep. His his 57 Chevy Nomad station wagon. Yeah, or I had and, my mom's uh, Pinot, one of the and, two. <laughs> and you so would good. you would oftentimes yeah. you would race a uh a full suspension uh yeah. monoshock. Yep. On the on the, on the downhill wow. race and do great. And I was like, yeah. wow. With, with mags. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the giant the of po- a man. <laughs> yeah, the photos of that, the photos of those of those. That bike you were riding, I mean, there, there's photos, you know, circulating around and it's amazing. Yeah. Well, there's amazing. one that there's an old one. I don't know if it was in a magazine or a newspaper, you know, a newspaper tabloid, but it was like a, a, a grainy picture of me going into the first turn. It's raining and you can just see the puddles of water. And I'm ahead of like Brent Patterson and a bunch of other, I mean, I'm leading the first turn on this like 49 pound bottle shop with mag wheels. <laughs> Harry Larry posted some videos of us jumping behind my house when I lived in Riverside lately. I don't know if people have seen them or been posted or tagged or whatnot, but pe- people I mean, oh gosh, that bike's so small. How'd you guys ride bikes so small? Dude, well, you know, when I was riding that bike, it was probably like state of the art and you were probably eight years old or still in diapers. So, you know, it worked. <laughs> <laughs> it we didn't know, you didn't know any better. That was just what they gave you. Yeah, that's yeah, that's what we all had. You know, we didn't, you know, we like, oh, we need a, a longer bike. Okay, well, let me give you a stem that's a half inch longer. Well, that'll work. But, you know, we never thought about like actually making the bike longer. We just got, you know, move the bars to Chicago style and put a longer stem on. It's crazy when you think about it, right? It wow. is. It's, you know, but, I mean, there's some, there's some video of me riding my DG 
at Corona Raceway. And, and literally I got my bars way past, you know, 90 degrees. And I'm like, oh my God, how did I ever ride that thing? That's probably why I was only on the team for about eight months. <laughs> well, when, when I think back, I mean, when I think back of Stu Thompson, when I first met him and I thought he was a giant and I, then I think back, he started racing on a stingray like everyone else did. Yeah. And I go, wow, how, how in the world? And then you went to longer bikes, but they weren't much, they weren't much longer. (laughs) Well, the stingray, the the stingray, instead of going longer, we just raised the bottom bracket so we could put 10 speed cranks on it. It was still a short ass bike. So what was the list? I'm dying to know what's the list of bikes, the progression of bikes that you went through to get to something that fits you. Um, I probably never got on anything that, fit me as it, like if it was today's standards, you know, mm. per se. Certainly, certainly not. Certainly but, not anything by today's standards. Yeah. So I would say, you know, obviously the, the Schwinn Stingray. And then we modified the Stingray by, I, I basically in my garage with a hacksaw, cut an inch out of the seat tube right above the bottom bracket. And I beat it up and then re-welded it. So it raised the bottom oh. bracket up. Uh, it raised the bottom bracket up an inch. And then I took the varsity cranks off my 10 speed, which were longer than the little five and a half inch pixie cranks. And, uh, you know, off the races we went. And then um, from that, I think I went to a, it might've been a Webco and it wasn't any longer. It was just like a stingray with straight tubes, or it could have been a redline square back. Um, but then again, you know, a short, short front I, end. I, yeah. And I don't, I know I, I can't always, I can't remember all that, the, the, the chronological order of what it was, but it was like, you know, maybe a Webco or I don't know if it was a Webco because Webco, I went from Webco to M- FMF. So it's probably a, a, a red line square back and then maybe a mongoose or might've been a mongoose, then a red line. But it was, yeah. I don't know. To, to think of a man your size on an aluminum frame on, yeah. on an FMF. It's funny. I don't, I don't, I don't ever remember really like snapping them or breaking them. I might've like stressed the seat tube, something where the loop tail connected into the back, but I never really remember like snapping a bottom bracket off or losing the head tube or nothing like that. Because I think they, they, the heat treating was getting a little bit more advanced and they knew kind of what to do. Not like when, when we were on DG and we were touring Florida in 76 and, and we're at some track somewhere and Scott was off this jump and the whole front end just busts off his FMF and he wraps it in a towel and hurries up, takes it back to his rent a car, you know, but uh, <laughs> I, I think more to do with that is, and watching those videos that were just posted of you in Riverside, I oh, think yeah. more to do with, dude, you were a smooth lander. You didn't make a lot of mistakes. Yeah. You, you were a smooth jumper. Well, I was you gonna saw, say that you, for a big you guy, saw, man. You you saw those jumps, you know. You don't want to miss those. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, the landing was what two feet, about two feet of a landing, and you just you had to. Yeah. I saw oh, you yeah. pushing down to get it. I mean, you were, yeah, you were over jumping and then pushing down to hit the landing. Th- those were that. Those were like over the backyard of my house. Those were fun. Oh man! But like, it was just like the the place by your house. You know, after we you know became friends and stuff, I you know ended up going to your house and chilling out and, and going, you know, go, but uh, what, 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 well, Jones, Jones, track? Jones yeah. track, but before just the field behind your, the, oh, end, yeah. of the, the end of the street. That's and then right. they ended up, and I guess they still called it twin palms, right? It, yeah. It was, it was, well, we or, called it back then it was called G force or twin yes. palms or yeah. yeah that yeah. was a, uh, there was a lot of jumps back there. Correct. Twin always. Miles. And that's where Leo green and Kevin McNeil used to race. Stu yeah. Thompson. Had well, I think, <laughs> and I think yeah. I yeah, think Kevin, I think Kevin ended up wanting to do the land speed record jump the Grand Canyon on that G Boy, I think it was. Was that was that the it, one that busted and exactly right? Same yeah. place. That was it. That was at Sand yeah. Hills. Yeah. Sand Hills. That's what it Wait, was. I just have to stop everybody right now to say one thing. Did you hear Stu Thompson say we were friends? <laughs> i said i said did i say before before we before were we were friends yeah before we were friends, before we were friends <laughs> yes. and then uh, thompson yeah. signed this picture for me yes I, if you look at your signature what? right here I and it says it. well it's because you wrote it with a little big pen oh okay. that's all i had <laughs> it's not like the one it's not like roger de with his with his sharpie no, I, I was ready for that one. I wasn't ready. Yeah. I gave you a big pen 
and it oh, says so it's your it's, fault then okay yes it says Stu thompson mike good luck with your future like you knew i was going to turn out to be a bad seed <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> like you figured you see me in lockup at some time well that was <laughs> did i put like an exclamation after it or something <laughs> good luck with your future. Yeah. i'll see you down the road <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. yeah mike good luck in prison yeah, yeah so, good luck with your future don't don't drop my name. <laughs> oh my gosh! It's so oh good. man, it's so good. Twin Palms. I didn't. You guys, I didn't know that Twin Palms was a thing before. I mean, I moved to Norco in eighty eight, eighty nine, and I didn't know Twin Palms was a place that you guys went to before that. Since oh the god, 70s. yeah, that Since place was 70s. that place was killer. I mean, yeah. I I know when I when I went there, there was a bunch of like kind of smash down jumps and some moto stuff. But there wasn't really any jumps, and I think it would it had probably gone through a uh, kind of gotten abandoned for a while, and then it got rekindled. I think maybe. But yeah. Well, yeah, they they crazy. had they had the track out there prior to that time yeah. frame, right? We used to. There was actually a BMX. Tra- there were two BMX tracks, two different yeah. style of BMX tracks out there that when? we had built, and in the in the seventies, in the seven wow. seventy, starting in 78, 79. No like they yeah. did races there. Yeah, well, yes, we held our own yeah. races. Like it ready. Oh, okay. okay, you and you and you. Oh, ready go. gotcha, gotcha. But yeah. it was a full track with berms going all the way to a finish yeah, line. Cool. And there was one that was called Europe, which was really downhill with big jumps. We called it Europe. I don't know why, but and then what happened was uh, we built, thanks to Donnie Gerritsen, we built Jones Track, which was more like a real BMX track, but right. with super cross style jumps. And then we stopped going out there. And right. then later on, uh, a few guys, uh, Russ LeBaron, actually two guys that rode for Stu Thompson's bike shop. Yeah. Two guys that rode for Stu Thompson went out there and built a lot of jumps. And that was Russ LeBaron and uh, and a kid called Hippie. Do you remember him? Uh, Hippie. Hippie, I was yeah. get, uh, When you said two, I'm like, holy crap, who other than Russ? It was Russ and Hippie. And Hippie's name was like Eric... Eric something. Um, uh, anyway, he was a younger, young, young kid with long hair. That's yeah. why we all called him hippie. And he ended up bunny hopping. There was a, a way to get into Twin Palms. We had to bunny hop a, a like a log. Yeah. And he kept hitting it and flipping over the bars. And uh, he he succumbed to his injuries. Oh, yeah. Passed away. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he, he bunny hopped a chain. Is that what it was? A chain? Yeah, he bunny well, hopped that, a chain. And, uh, there was a chain there at the gate. And he went over the bars, broke his neck, and he ended up passing away, man. Yeah. Uh, Holy. That kid, dude, that kid could ride. He was a great rider. Eric Crowbell, Crowball. That was his name, Eric Crowball. He could ride. Uh, that sounds familiar. Yeah. But hey, you know what? If you spent a lot of time down at Twin Palms and all those jumps down there, yeah, you, you ended up being a good jumper. I mean, yeah, look at Mike. Right? Look, at, look oh. at Mike. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's I, I owe whatever success I have. A big part of it is going down and riding there every single day. Yeah. Well, and especially in jo- at Jones track, too. I mean, we would I would get there because that place was fun to practice on. And I'd get there and it'd be a, like a, a cold morning, about 730 in the morning, overcast fog. You know, and yeah. I'd be out there with a sweatshirt and just ripping <laughs> laps after laps after laps. And, you know, and then Lee Madeline would show up and we'd do gate starts on that Ricky O wooden ramp. And then he would break a chain and smash his face. And <laughs> <laughs> Funny story about Jones and the big, big jumps there. I remember Pistol Pete came out one time, rode one lap and said, we don't race like this. And he left. <laughs> yeah, we don't, we don't race on tracks like this. And he left. I remember Charles Townsend coming and he went around the track so fast, but they were huge jumps and he would just barely make them over, but he could, he could do them all. What's the fun of that? No fun at all. I mean, but, Hey, there's a double, but I think we might be able to clear that berm. So let's make it a triple. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You know, and then, and you know, weekly after everyone could jump everything, we would tear down the jump and move it back like five feet. Okay. Let's see who can make yeah. it now. Well, let, no, or or let's. Well, what happens if we go up the side of the tabletop and land on the backside of the landing of the double? You yeah. know, and just you just play games. So good. Yeah. So well, good. that was. I mean, what a good time, right? Like, I don't. I don't know if. I don't know if racers. I don't know because I'm out of touch, but I don't know if racers do those type of things now, right? Like, I. I mean, tr- that was literally. I, 
I don't know about you guys, but for me, that was part of our, my training, like my training, we would go, uh, and this is a little bit after your guys' time at Twin Palms, but we would ride from my house in Norco. There was jumps at sixth street, right across the street from Russ's house. We do a little bit there. And then we would ride the back road past the cemetery. You know where I'm talking about, Stu. Were, were, were those the, the jumps that were behind the library? Was there no, a library? Those, these, these ones were just in a lot directly across the, across sixth street. Okay. Um, and so we, but it, it was just a real small spot that Russ had a couple of turns and a couple of jumps. We would, it was just kind of a congregation spot where everybody would meet. Right. We would ride over to, we would, everybody would ride, we'd migrate over to Twin Palms and we'd ride Twin Palms. And then we would go, um, we'd eat at a the Mexican place called Q Tortas. Yeah. I don't remember the name of it, but I do remember yeah. going to a Mexican restaurant there, right? Well, actually, it was more by, jones's track yeah correct it's closer to jones it was. yeah it's two tortas best yeah. best carnitas tostadas ever yeah so we do <laughs> we do two tortas and then we would go back to uh i think it was la sierra high school norda vista nord was that the and we Nord-a-Vista, would play bike tag. home of the braves yeah we played bike tag in bike the school tag. and yeah. that was training that was a day of training well it's amazing. like it, it's like you're um we were multi talented in various bike handling abilities you know dirt jumpers you know freestylers um great at playing tag foot down just chasing each other and just just riding you know just just well the first we're talking to the first freestyler ever skate no, parks there, there oh, was probably on. there was probably people before me but i think the the only thing i had is i was like the first um publicized yeah. picture that showed some dude like at skater cross in Reseda. um but you getting know i'd been air. In, but, yeah air. but i i'd been in you know abandoned backyard you know empty pools you know, ride my skateboard just as well. And, and, the, and the, and the bike, you know, trying to get up to the coping and thinking that was hot shit, but, um, you know, but going there's over the guy. light, just there's, going there's, over, if you go over the light, that was a big yeah. thing. Oh yeah. Right over the light. <laughs> or, or, or riding the bowl and then bunny hopping the stairs, you know, as you're already, <laughs> comp- as you're already compressed into the side, you got a bunny hop to get up over the stair. If it hadn't already been taken out. I love it. But, but yeah, those were just fun times. I do want I to point out, though, a picture in the magazine without a visor. As oh, yeah. Just- well, that was it <laughs> at Runway Skate Park. And, you know, you're, you're going down these giant bowls and you're looking down and you want to look up to see where you're going and the visor gets in the way. <laughs> so I just took the visor off. Yeah, it did look pretty stupid. <laughs> it, but- did all- <laughs> hey, it didn't look worse than my white helmet. No, it did not <laughs> yeah. look worse than that, no. <laughs> My Iglo helmet in 86 trumps that no visor any day. <laughs> that, that was that styrofoam helmet? Yeah. yeah. Ooh, the coo- yeah. We call it the cooler. Was yeah, it Men- cooler. Men- was it Men- Meno or Menlo or oh no, it was an Echo helmet? Oh an Echo. Well yeah, that, I, think I'm, right. I, I think I'm going back even further with uh Patterson the Brothers. The Mino, Mino helmet. Mino, yeah. Yeah, they had the second ugliest helmets. Second yeah. ugliest helmet in yeah. BMX by far. Yeah. <laughs> but at least it had a visor. Well, I had a I had yeah. a uh, uh, road bike helmet when Bell was just making just plain old fiberglass. Or not fiberglass, but styrofoam. No, you know, no plastic shell over them yet. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, pretty scary. Mm. <laughs> Speaking of better, scary. But it's uh, better than what better than those uh the real old oh yeah, yeah. yeah hair nets or whatever they used to call oh them. yeah the leather helmets yeah. the yeah <laughs> the leather helmets yeah in, in was, road cycling they used to race that way when you fall off. you just that way when you fall it's just a slow death yeah well <laughs> all the all the pieces stay in one spot yeah it was easier to identify the body yeah, yeah. yes, well, uh, yes. it was a little easier <laughs> Uh, Stu of all the bikes you have raced I know there's going to be a lot of our friends are going to want to know the question Okay, uh, you you have had a lot of bikes you, you've had is there one that you look back and say was your favorite uh, I would probably say my pro line wow yeah. interesting your pro line and yeah, why is it, that well I think it was more advanced 
than any of the other bikes that we rode, you know, like the mongoose long, which was, you know, maybe three quarters or an inch longer than a stock mongoose. Um, the PK ripper was, was good, but you know, it, you know, could have been longer in, you know, compared to today's standards. Um, the, you know, my STR one, it was, it was cool, but you know, it flexed like a wet noodle or al dente Ooh. noodle. Um, but <clears throat> the pro line was, was good. I liked it. Um, I tried to mimic my, um, custom Huffy that I made after I left Redline and went to Huffy. I tried to mimic the geometry, but not quite have the five inch head tube. Um, so I tried to keep the same top tube length and, and rear bottom bracket height and chain stay and stuff. I tried to try to mimic it because I didn't want to like start all over and, and just, you know, be too much of a experiment, you know, cause I was already at the peak, if not trying to, you know, trying to slide down my career and I didn't have, you know, days were numbered because, you know, too many fast new guys were coming up and, you know, I'm tipping the scale on age and injuries. So, well, but I think, I think I, I think I did. I, I mean, I kicked the ass on that mongoose, you know, with my Heineken sticker on it. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I kicked the ass on the PK Ripper. I kicked ass on the str1 the mongoose the red line yep. the huffy I, I mean you adapt oh, and you make oh, it work on the full suspension monoshock with yes, mag wheels that, that too you that kicked too. ass on everything my man yeah, yeah i was gonna say you yeah. kicked ass on big wheels tricycles all yeah. that shit well dude. people you know people say oh it's the, it's the bike no it's the rider yeah, yeah. it ain't the arrow it's the indian that's right <laughs> All right, so I do have to ask you then, because the same 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 group of guys want to. The worst bike was there a bike that you just didn't like? Uh, we're amongst friends. No one else will hear this. Yeah, that's right. I I I didn't like. I won on it, but the the DG wasn't really meant for me. Um, th they were experimenting with um, thin walled tubing. Um, and it just, it just didn't work for me. Um, another bike that I, I rode temporarily, uh, probably only for about two weeks. I rode a Suzuki when they, when they started coming out wow. and, um, mm. I, I bent my seat post a couple days before a big, uh, a race at Corona. So I'm like, shit, I need a seat post. And I think all the shops were closed or I was too cheap to buy a seat post. So I found a piece of half inch galvanized <laughs> threaded steel pipe. No, you did not. Yeah, I did. And I just, <laughs> I just, I just hammered it down into the seat, seat post. And, uh, did you, you know, thread the seat on? I, was, <laughs> I, 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 I did have to put some shims in it, but I got the seat all nice and tight. Well, so anyways, I'm coming down the let's see, first, second turn. The second turn is where they, they stopped the, they stopped the two, two burn bowl. And they yep. just came out, they came out 90 degree. And so I was going down that next to last straightaway where this, they just have the kind of tiered jumps. The big, the, a, the big jumps. Yeah. I slipped a pedal, landed on my seat. Normally in a perfect world, your seat post is thin and it would bend and you'd, you'd, you know, you'd ride out of it. Well, I had, you know, quarter inch thick galvanized steel pipe down there. So it didn't give. So when I, so when I slipped the pedals, I landed on my seat, dude, I, I freaking flew over the bars, big old endo. And I, I don't, I ate shit so bad. It was, I ended up, I think my handlebar, there's a picture of it where the handlebar is actually the grip and the bar are all the way bent down, touching the bar where it goes. It was totally Holy. bent. All, all the way, you know, the, back then they were just mild steel bars. I don't, I don't think we had chromoly yet, but yeah, it was, that was nasty. Um, <laughs> my first, Suzuki. My first, yeah. My With the first, Home Depot seat post. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I think my first product, not production, my first prototype Huffy was, um, and it was experimental. So it wasn't, it was too short and that's, in 1984, when Huffy was the primary bike manufacturer for the 84 Olympics. So in order for them to make the bike, there was like a three-month lag time for them to produce a bike at the factory in Dayton 
and then ship it to me and test it and give them feedback and then tell them, okay, I need this longer, this shorter. And it was just, yeah, that, that didn't work. And that's when we, we went to the, the powers to be at Huppy and said, Hey, we, we need somebody local that can build quick, make, make adjustments on the fly. And they said, yeah, just, you know, find somebody on the West coast and, and have them start making bikes for you. And so, you know, the biggest frame company at the time or bike manufacturer was GT. So we just, you know, I went with my specs and said, Hey, build this. And, you know, they, they built whatever I wanted to make. Um, so that turned out to be better. Whatever. It Stuart, is. You, you said the pro line was the one that you, I, I did. I did well on that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's an understatement. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you, yeah, yeah, I did all right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, there's actually a picture of me when I'm, I'm racing for SE racing. I'm actually racing a pro line. And that was like probably right at the turning point when I was going to switch over to red line. All right. Okay. Cause I was going to ask you, do you think it was just that you find you got the dimensions, right? You know, after doing so many, you finally got the dimensions, right. Or was it really the bike itself? I guess it's, uh, you know. I, I don't think, I don't think any one bike will make or break you you learn to adapt and ride the bike to its capabilities and it, and at that point in juncture of the sport we were pretty much cutting edge who was your favorite teammate who was my favorite teammate yeah. or funniest or just uh, a, a, a teammate you really enjoyed traveling with or i i enjoyed traveling with uh john Cruz and jeff brumner they were two funny cats. Um, <laughs> Gary, we, Gary we, Ellis, we know Cruz is. Uh, yeah, Gary, Gary Ellis was cool. You know, we we're pretty good. Um, early, early on, I mean, teammates, though, teammates. Perry Kramer. I mean, who, you know, who can resist Perry? And then Jeff Utterback. I mean, we had some, we had some good times. Well, um, th so there's another side of the coin, my man. Of course, there always is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's who, not too was, who was the worst teammate? Who was the worst teammate? Or Didn't worst person to travel with? Didn't have one. We're all, we're all, no, I, I can't think of anybody. Okay. Well, no. then on the back of that, who is was the, is, Are there rumors? Well, no. Well, we can all name somebody, but we can't name yours. Oh, send it to me in a text because I'd like to know. <laughs> you want to know? I can tell you who mine was. I know well, who ECs was. I mean, we all had them. That's funny. I team mean, mate. I was probably JV's worst. <laughs> team, 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 yeah, yeah, best and worst. I got along with almost. I got along with almost all of my teammates, but except teammates, one. Teammates were. I mean, I, if anything, I there was only one them. other. There's probably only one other guy that was you know in the pro class or something, but. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't have any, nothing wrong with any of my teammates. They were all cool. That's good to hear. We all had fun. All right. I think that, you know what, Stu, I think that's a reflection on you as a person though, too. That's you. Yeah. That's you. Uh, 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 well, I mean, what, what good is it to have issues with a teammate? If you're riding on the same team, traveling together right. and, same. and, and it's like, what's, who, who's it going to benefit? Yeah, yeah, but sometimes you can't help it. Sometimes there's just a guy that's going to throw a cat into the shower when you're when you're in there and you know, prodded, have prodded by you, Hollywood. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah. Hey, but guess what? He's, he's in the shower. Hereres this cat. Why don't you go throw it in yeah. there? I didn't say that. <laughs> no. He walked well, in. All, he walked in with a uh, stray cat, and I just looked to looked at him and I said, "You know, he's in the shower." That's all I said. That's yeah. So ob obviously you had to be spending the night or camping at someone's house because you're not going to find a stray cat at a motel, are you? <laughs> we were at a hotel. Well, at a, ho <laughs> a very stray, mangy, <laughs> wild cat. <laughs> okay. And, 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 to shreds. And I'm yeah. sure you lured it with a hamburger or a piece of uh, pizza or something, right? I, I have no idea. I was an innocent <laughs> yeah. bystander in the town. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look at this Hollywood guy. Yeah. yeah. You know Always. me, I'm innocent. Hey, is it me? Hey. Well, uh, <laughs> that was before someone going like this. Well, I got it on cell phone. Exactly. exactly. Right? Yes. So uh, so if if you had great teammates, and uh, how about your biggest rival? Who would you say in your career was your biggest rival? 
anybody that lined up on the gate. Ooh. EC, did you ever line up on the gate list too? I did. <laughs> but but you might have. I got to race you one time. I mean, the, um, I mean, if you want to like, I mean, rival. I mean, obviously, you know, you've got the oh, shit. I mean, how do you not say everybody that lined up on the gate? You know, Frank Post, Brian Patterson, Brent Patterson, Greg Hill, Ken McNeil, Leo Green, Matt Harris. Uh, Danny David Al. I mean, you just you go on and on and on. I said anybody that I mean, if you made it to the main and you're one of the seven other guys on that gate, mad respect. Agree, totally like, agree. Oh, 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 okay. then you, but but I, like earlier on, you know, like I like I remember when it would be Frank Post. I'd be in like gate one, and he'd be in like gate eight, and be on, and of course lane one would be on the inside. He. You know, before the cane starts, he goes, I'm coming over after you, Stu. And I just like, go, 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 come and get it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I mean, you just, yeah, come on, bring it. Just have fun and do it. If you, if you crash or you lose out, you know, it, you learn. It, it's so funny in that Russ LeBaron, your former, uh, your former <laughs> sponsored writer, who wants to thank you, by the way, because he said writing for Stu Thompson uh, opened a lot of doors that would have never been open for him. He's very really? grateful to you. Oh, yeah, that's cool. I'm glad to hear uh, that. Yeah. He said he wanted me to ask you one question and one question only. He wanted Sorry. to know who your least favorite pro racer was. Least? And then he named him. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, oh. and, and to all of you that don't know our friend, Russell Baron, we've talked about him a few times. He's the hard, harshest critic there is. With zero filter. N the least, most blunt forward person that I know. Least favorite. Good Lord. He didn't hesitate and answer it. Let me see this. Let me let me write this down because it'll probably just come in at the last minute. Least favorite. <laughs> Your least favorite pro. Least favorite pro. I'll give you a hint. <sighs> You've already uh, named him. <laughs> you already said he would cut you over. He would cut over on you oh, from lane one, from lane Frank, eight to lane one. <laughs> uh, Frank Post. Well, I, I don't know, but I know that if I well, you him, said I named him, and that was the only story I gave about cutting over. Yeah. yeah. Well, there you go. I uh, know no, Frank. I, Frank was Frank was entertaining, uh, and still is, I imagine. Uh, yeah, I called him a few years ago on his birthday, and it was quite a shock to him. But he's still a character. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> well, you know, uh, for a for a guy like you who is, uh, well, I'll save this. I'll save this. I have another question, and that is, you know, um, you may not have called him a rival, but you call him a brother in law. Correct. Uh, I know that you guys, uh, you and your brother in law, Greg Hill, did race against each other quite a bit. Quite a bit. Yes. And yes. I, I always just wondered about like what happens at the Thanksgiving table or Christmas <laughs> dinner table, like do you you know were you guys elbowing each other for the for the mashed potatoes or I, yeah well, I wanted I wanted I, to ask about Stu I, I agree uh, I, I'm to further on that like the world's where was it in Slogharn were you oh, guys yeah. with each other yes how did yes. That, how does how does that go after. Uh, it didn't go well because there was a lot of finger pointing on whose fault it was. Right. Um, I have my version. Um, but I mean, getting back to family dinners, I mean, I would say before Greg had established himself, um, you know, I'm, I'm dating Tanya and I'm going over to their house and, and to, to clarify, he, Tanya, you Tanya. were dating Tanya. I was dating. We were now, now married to, yes, and have been for 42 years. Holy Hannah. And that's 42 California years. Hey. Yes. And we were yeah. dating. And, that's, and we were dating before that. And that's Greg Hill's sister. Just for Sweet. everyone. Yeah. To know. Congratulations on that, by the way. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Wow. That's awesome, man. That's 82 um, years in California years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, there were, but he was, he was young and he wasn't a pro yet. So we would do gate starts on his driveway and we would just have fun. And, and I think, I think I've heard a couple of interviews with Greg um, saying that, you know, who's this, you know, who's this guy who's, you know, the local hero at the local tracks and he's coming over and he's dating my sister and 
you know, you know, I want to, I don't know if, I, you know, I don't want to use the words. I want to be like him, but I want to, I want to beat him. And so what do I got to do to beat him? So that's, I think where our rivalry just got really competitive because he wanted to beat me and I'm, you know, I'm the number one rider and I've got a, a, a kind of a target on my back. So, you know, let, let them come because all these, young and upcoming riders make me a faster, smarter, m- more intense rider as well. So, you know, I, I took right. each competitor. Um, yeah, they could beat me, but, you know, I'll figure out what their weakness is and I'll, you know, make mm-hmm. it, make it work. I nobody it. Cons- nobody consistently beat you. That was just it. I love uh, that. dude. Do you know how awesome that answer is? I love the answer. I'm gonna. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll have. I'm gonna to take the loss, but I'm gonna embrace it, and I'm gonna go home. And I'm gonna. So I'm gonna yeah. And I'm gonna kick your ass. I was gonna say this earlier. You know, uh, when when you ask questions like "Who's your worst teammate?" or the, "The biggest rival," those answers you give just validate the guy that you are. You you really are the all American hero. Um, you know, I never remember you getting in trouble. Uh, there was really never any controversy with Stu Thompson. I never saw you lose your temper at a race or, or I, I never remember you getting in a fight at a race. You, know, you must have, you must have missed those races then. <laughs> there there he were races in Norco Did it happen? There were he did not race Norco Y. No, he didn't. <laughs> I, no, I didn't race Norco. No, yeah, I didn't. raced Norco Y. Yeah, I did too. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> you, you, you got that fence behind you and you just go straight down the hill and then That's do about right. a series Thanks. of 700 flat turns. That's exactly right. right. That's right. Yeah. Exactly right. Start up, you start up on Boozer Hill. Yeah. yeah. And when you add, and when you go up on turn three, you could hear the cans opening as you went around the turns. Yeah, that was it, man. There was all kinds of yeah, fist dude, I, I did Norco Y. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, anyway, I think that uh, you know, the like I said, the people that are going to Mighty Mo's BMX cruise and the people that are going to the Buckeye BMX show where you're oh, also yeah. a special guest. Mm. Uh, both of those events, um, there people are very lucky to get that time with you because you're really, you know, uh, other than fo- Facebook, you're not, in my opinion, you're not out there enough. Man, you're such a hero. You've been so much to the sport. You've done so much for all of us, get, you know, making the sport bigger by what you did. Well, but, thanks. Um, are, you I know that... to, are you coming up to Frogtown? Oh, oh yeah, Frogtown. Yes. Uh, Stomp yeah, and Stu Thompson Sept- will be Sept- at Frogtown. <laughs> September 9th through the 11th, big Frogtown event, um, where there's going to be some dirt sampling going on. Yes, and, sir, and guess what bike I'm riding? I'm going to guess that you're going to ride the Monoshock with mag wheels. You betcha. Uh, yes. oh, <laughs> I can't the- believe you still have it. Oh, yeah, I still have it. EC, he yes. rivals you as a hoarder. He no, I do it. not. I love oh, it. Oh, dude, you do. You, I, I you got showed me that, a picture of an old helmet he had. I was like, I, "Order." I, I got that old. <laughs> I got that old bike, and that's about it. I mean, yeah, okay. Look, I got. Here I got my old my old red line helmet. <laughs> look, see that? Yeah. Look at that the glove. Yeah, is and that an enemy? I got that. I finally got that back from uh, that is one of the original Oakleys that turned your yeah, hand the red. Factory Pilot glove. Yeah, they they turn your hand red when you sweat. Yep. Um, hey, dude, turn that helmet sideways so we can see the lightning bolts. Oh my gosh! Look hey. at that. Now most hey, of the hold, most hold of the on, everybody. Are, I want you to see. It's that helmet the photo- right there. Look at that helmet right yeah. there. Most that of the helmets it. that are, have pictures are, um, it's a white visor, but this one's red. And I never know what color visor I have on. But what I got duct I, tape. Is, what color duct tape? Yeah. Is? Oh, that's gray. That's gray, baby. <laughs> Look at that but I don't know what else I do. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's my Yamaha Gold Cup trophy from 1974. Wow. Eighth place cruiser at the Canada Worlds. <laughs> i told Stu. i told Stu earlier dude you could put that helmet on ebay and probably buy another house in somewhere in the country yeah <laughs> oh, but you could buy a but buy I mean, a I, mansion I, buy a mansion in missouri without the helmet yeah i like i mean <laughs> well i mean there's some things that mean a lot to me yeah and you know and i used to have all my helmet i used to have all my helmets in a 55 gallon trash can when i used to live with my parents 
I mean, what, when, when we had, when we were on Huffy and um, Bob Hadley and I were trying to figure out, you know, race communication and stuff like that, we were just kind of following NASCAR and we had walkie talkie and two way communications in my helmet. So he could oh. talk to me while I'm out in the race. Oh, that's cheating. Um, I'm no, sure that's not. cheating. <laughs> no, no, it's not. There it's probably before, wasn't anything in the there rule were, book. There are no rules. So that's cares? right. That's right. It's you not know? cheating. If it's not but, the rule book, it ain't cheating. But, you know, when you only got a race, it's like 32 and a half seconds long. You know, you don't really pay attention to who's behind you. You just, you know, haul ass and keep going. Could you even hey, do you even hey, Stu, what do you want? What do you want to have for lunch today? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Stu, hey have you tried the get... burrito at the snack bar? <laughs> <laughs> hey, they don't they don't pay out to fifth place very well. Better move up one spot. <laughs> man, it's oh, crazy, so man. Like, like, like you say, you kept your helmets in the, that you know but, that uh, yeah, but, yeah, but they, they they all ended up in the landfill at the end of this story. You know, it, it's I know, but that's the that's the crazy thing, right? Like now, these things are. Super oh god valuable. and it's it's crazy right i did i did the same thing i ended up giving um i had like four or five hutches and a whole bunch of old parts and i built all these old bikes up and i gave them to my sister's kids for christmas one year I, those bikes are gone yeah and, and but man those but at the time when i gave them it was like wow this would be a great christmas gift to the kids they can ride bikes they didn't really have the value that things oh yeah from then have now those bikes are like fifteen thousand I mean, dollar bikes. Yeah. I mean, if we if we knew to squirrel away, like, oh yeah, there's my there's my national number one mongoose. You know, let me let me just put that in the rafters for the rest of its life. Oh, there's right. there's my there's my first PK Ripper, or there's my STR one, or there's my Redline prototype, or there's my first. You know, it's like, yeah, it's, especially I mean, it's your like, stuff. It's it's like you know you're riding a bike and it's like hey we got this new colorway let's go ahead and and let me let you let me ship you a, a frame and put it together and ride it so i would take everything off the old bike and i would build a new bike and then what do you want with the, me to do this frame well send it back to me okay i send it back to him or you know cut it up and destroy it or don't let anybody see it so it's like shit half my stuff went to the landfill right you know it's so, because you never or, or or, you know, at the end of the finish line, your number plate gets ripped off. You promise your jersey to somebody. Uh, <laughs> your grips your grips get cut off somewhere in the parking lot. You know, you, you go to race your bike and your pads are gone. Um, <laughs> it's like, what the hell, dude? You know, just let me let me brace first. If you ask me, I'll give it to you. But I um, know. it's and so if you wild. say no, sometimes they take it anyway, huh? Bill it, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pretty wild. I mean, I remember like. Yeah. There was the that race in Bercy in France when we went there, greatest and, race ever. And and I and I won that. Uh, yeah, I wish they would at least let the ice rink dry out before they built the track over it. That's a but, shame. Um, <laughs> that wouldn't be the first soft track we ever rode on. But no sense in traveling halfway around the world to ride on a sponge. But <laughs> no, you can do it in you can do it in Pasadena, Texas. Or... Exactly. <laughs> My bluff. Yeah. But but um. It's funny watching the videos of that. You know, you see me cross the finish line in first place, and I just like skid to a stop, and I and I go up against the stands, and it's just automatically boom, programmed to shit. And I'm just like, I hadn't I hadn't finished the race more than two point five seconds later, and I'm I'm and I'm already signing autographs by crazy you know French fans, and it's like that's what it's all about. Yeah, it was awesome, greatest race ever. That was fun. Well, I have I have two more questions. One is, uh, is there what's the one thing that people don't know about Stuart Thompson? Shit. <laughs> well, if you haven't figured it out, I'm kind of a quiet, keep to myself guy. Um, I'm very old school, like you know, open doors for people. Yes, sir. No, ma'am. Please. It, Thank you. Um, Good day. Respect. respect. Um, things that, that my parents raised me with, you mm. know, good old family values. Um, try not well, to be too egotistical. Um, know your place in line. Just, you know, just be yourself. But don't Mr. be an asshole. Mr. Stu Thompson, we have had a bunch of guests on here, and all of them qualify in the same way. 
that we've had uh, the, our, our list of guests so far have all been what we call all around good eggs. And, uh, and as I said about you, you're an all American hero. Um, Thank all you. those, all those things that people may not know about you. I already did. Uh, that's why you've been a hero to me because you are that guy. And I've always been that guy. You've been, you've been, you've been the straight edge guy that doesn't get in trouble, but I was waiting <laughs> to tell the story. Come on, tell the story. Oh, hey. <laughs> so as he said, we became it- friends. And one time uh, there was the, uh, the interbike bike show in Long Beach Convention Center. And that was, if people don't know, the interbike, that's the trade show for Were all you with the me? Companies. Were you with me on that? The, all the companies in long, all the companies in the bike industry ha- all come together in one place once a year. And it was in the Long Beach Convention Center. And I had to go and Stuart had to go. And I said, hey, why don't we go together? And he said, I'll drive in my pickup truck. Yep. Like, Great, let's go together. Look at him. Look at him. He's starting to laugh. <laughs> those, those things work, man. They work. So I'm, I'm with Stuart. We're going and we're running maybe maybe 10 minutes late. Not, not you know, not, not Norco late, but we're running late. <laughs> And, and man, he is getting busy in the streets of hey, Long Beach. Uh, let me just let you know. Let me let you know that they changed the entrance from the year before. That's so, all I got to say. So, so Stu, so Stu Thompson and it was, claims, and it, was, and it was foggy. Stu Thompson claims it was foggy, <laughs> and Stu Thompson claims, "Oh, I know the fastest way into the convention center." We come ripping around the backside, and it's and I'm not kidding. It's like Long Beach Grand Prix. He's getting this blue Toyota <laughs> truck sideways. <laughs> we come around the corner, and there are big signs: "Do not enter." <laughs> and there's the big spikes. That doesn't mean me. Oh. Did, did not even mean. slow. I think he downshifted and punched it. <laughs> For those other guys, Over. too. For those yeah. other guys. Yeah, yes. that, that doesn't count. When you're the number one pro in the world, that doesn't <laughs> That's not for me. Just boom, 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 boom. And sure enough, we park, get out, we start walking, and you can hear it in the background. <laughs> <laughs> was hey, it three, it was, of, three of four three, tires? Th- three of four tires. Wow. But, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that is the all American hero. I want, I couldn't remember who was with me. Thank you for reminding me that. But hey, that's if a, I'm not mistaken. And Lynn I tell Kasten that story paid a lot. For your tires. I think Lynn Caston paid for your tires. No, we went to some, it was a, uh, what they call it where you, it was like, uh, it's a kind of a place where they get retreads and, and they just kind of, they kind of, Stuart- I they know you of, don't know because you're just a great white guy. You don't know. Yabbies. It's called a yantaria. <laughs> yes. Well, they, where they, they, oh, polish he's, them okay. Up okay. With, he's okay. I fix. He's okay. No, no, I they'll, fix. they'll have like armor all or they'll paint them, they paint them black to make them look new. But yeah, oh, they, he's, I think, he's a good tire. We make a good deal. Yeah. It's a good tire. Yeah. Those are for like, it's probably someone I may have been related to. Yeah. I'm <laughs> sure. And we got some used tires to get home. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that was great. <laughs> I remember that. You weren't so late. Do I. I was like, hey, you weren't late. <laughs> no, yeah, go. Yeah, go. No. Yeah, you got the shortcut. Yeah, go. Watch it, Stu. Well, see, it's a, it's a lifelong, long, long, lifelong memory you've got. See that? That's what yeah. it's about, though, man. That's the guy that goes backwards over the spikes and doesn't give two rats' asses. Because <laughs> he's Stu Thompson. Oh. Well, the Supreme Commander. Stompin' Stu Thompson, as you heard it here, fans, my friend. <laughs> yeah, your friend. I'm hanging on to that for the rest of my life. Now, you know, you know, I, you are a true friend, Mike, because you you call me Stuart. That's right. And and true friends call me by my my given name, Stuart. And not a lot of people. I mean, just I wouldn't say a lot of people. A lot of people call me Stu. Yes, but. True, true, true friends will, will call me Stuart. And, and, and that goes, <clears throat> I remember that happening. I, I called um, Greg Esser once and talked to him. He's from the East Coast. And, and um, you know, he, he calls me Stuart. And, you know, because that's what, you know, he's, he's, we're friends and friends. That's, I don't know. And it, it's, it's kind, of, kind of a weird thing. I can't remember the exact story. But, I mean, yeah, true, like yourself, you know, we are friends. We've known each other for a long time. I used to hang out at your house. You'd come to my house and 
you know, long time ago, but you know, we're friends. And th I thank you for that. And I'll tell you this, that, you know, I've heard, I remember Scott calling you Stu Bob and I know they've heard some other names, but you know, the, the day that you said to me, Hey, call me Stuart. I was like, Oh, yeah, <laughs> Part of, you were grandfathered in. I yeah. was grandfathered yeah. in, you know. And I thought, I thought, being from the same neighborhood as Kevin McNeil, I would never get that opportunity uh. because uh, Kevin was a rival, and, and Leo, you know, they're great guys, but they were yeah. rivals. You yeah. know, it's like it's like being a Dodger fan. If you're a Dodger fan, you hate the Giants. It's kind of like a, you're like now on the Hair Club for Men. You know, it's Stewart. It's Stewart. Yeah. <laughs> Stuart, my friend Stuart. I love it. Well, um, to me, you're my friend Stuart, but to the rest of the world, you're Stu Thompson, the yeah. greatest BMX racer ever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of that. That's my stage name, Stu Thompson. Well, uh, my man, you've spent a lifetime living up to it, and you, you continue to do so. For the people that are going on the on the Mo uh, Mighty Mo's BMX cruise, they're getting a treat to to hear from Stu Thompson. To the people that are going to the to the lucky people that are going to go to the Buckeye BMX show, same thing. They're going to get an awesome experience just to yep. be around. Who is like you said, a quiet, reserved guy, old school that doesn't go out there that much. It's a real treat, and for us, and Frogtown, is, don't forget Frogtown, Frog and Frogtown, Frog where Town. you're gonna where you are gonna sit with us for a couple of minutes, right? Yeah, of course. Ah, this guy <laughs> hooked him in right there. See, I did that. Hooked of him course. In. Yeah. yeah, you're gonna. Yeah. So, and Frogtown, which is just in a couple of weeks, where a bunch well, of our uh, friends will be there. You are going, right, Mike? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm racing. Did, oh, did you get your invite to the Patterson party? Okay, never mind. I didn't, <laughs> you didn't hear that for me. <laughs> wow, wow. Did I mention I'm a Dodger fan? <laughs> oh, freaking no cal <laughs> grudge holders. Um, my watchy brothers <laughs> holders i don't know if you can see it but my son the man the oh, myth look at the that. legend yeah hey. my, my <laughs> son got, model. my son got me for that got me for that for a birthday oh. present hey we hey. need to get we need to get Stu uh hooked up with whiskey in the wild absolutely whiskey. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think me, Tanya's cooking. Tanya was cooking dinner earlier. Whis, yeah, whiskey in, in the wild.com. The wild. These guys right here, Stu. I know. I, yes, I see that. It comes yeah. with the flask and you take awesome. a sip at You take a sip at the summit. That's what you Six. do. <laughs> and when you take a sip at the summit, it, it makes downhill a whole different experience. <laughs> you no, know, it's funny. It's funny. I remember racing a Corona downhill. And I was walking my bike back up from the finish line and um, John Botima and I think uh, John Hill, they were sitting in the first turn and I was going up for my main event or semi or something. And John Botima is drinking a, probably a Pabst blue ribbon or something like that. And he goes, Hey, you want to drink? And I'm like, Fuck yeah. So I freaking down half a beer before I'm going back up to the starting gate for the main event. So, yeah. Different times. I was old enough, so don't hold it against me. No. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm going to tell I'm going to tell a story. Okay. There was a kid that rode for Dave's bike shop called Eloy Sanchez. I remember Eloy remember Sanchez. Eloy Sanchez? I do. Eloy. His dad was awesome. His dad goes, we were at La Mirada, which was a rate you've been there, raced in the park. Oh yeah. And uh, Mr. Sanchez said, uh, "Hey, hey, Hollywood, you want to win today? I got this. I got the recipe. You will win today." And I said, "What is it?" And he goes, "Here." And he handed me a big jalapeno pepper. Oh. And he said, "I'm gonna go to the finish line with this big jug of water." And he goes, "And you, right <laughs> before the main, you bite that pepper. You eat the whole thing." And he goes, "And then I'll be at the finish line, and you'll be the first <laughs> one there." No. I, and I did it. I ate the thing. I ate the whole thing. And what, by the time the starter started talking, my eyes were watered so bad. I couldn't see the game. I, couldn't see the game. I was dying. And it was like a, and it was like a triple pointer at La Mirada. Oh. Oh, so, that's, was it, was it water though? At the end? Oh yeah. At the finish line. Oh, it, yeah. Fortunately, it was a big giant milk jug filled with water. I, I when, when mountain biking was, 
first starting to get kind of big, we were doing an exhibition race at the Carlsbad Raceway. After, in between, oh, I remember that. Yeah, in, right. in between the Moto G, in between the Moto GPs, and we're going up the. They call it the. Oh, what the downhill they call, but it was it was crazy. But we were riding up it, and I'm I'm like back in the pack, you know, and I'm just pushing up the hill and there's this dude hangs over the fence he goes and i'm like thirsty i'm dying he goes here have some water i grab his cup and i just oh, i just shot it down it was freaking straight vodka or gin <laughs> and i'm like wow just spit it out and i'm like oh my god but yeah that was awesome my friend my hero uh and the greatest bmxer of, of my time uh, I, I love it yeah. Well, I want to give I want to give a couple of shout outs to some people that are helping me today. Um, Greg Kundrig from Cycle ESA in Riverside. Yeah, Craig R- Craig R R S. Hold on, hold on. Uh, yeah, Craig Kundrig. Craig Kundrig. Former, he, yeah, owner of R R S. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And 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 my first employer. Yeah. Local race. Um, he was a local race promoter as well. He promoted mountain bike races. He actually and, he actually started promoting the races at Rim Nordic. Way back when, and Nor- and Norba at Big Bear, dude, he ran races up at um, Holdacrooks as well. Oh, yep, hold did, on. I've done I've done those. Hold yeah. on, let me let me blow uh, your mind on two things. One, East East, High- East Highland Ranch. Yep. He took oh. over as the track operator at Corona Downhill. Yep, and he ended up being the UCI uh, yep. track operator. We traveled the world setting up yep. the tracks for UCI. Yep. Yeah, I mean, going from one to one end to the other. Yep. Yep. That's Mr. Um, Craig Kundig. Craig. Thanks um, for thinking of him. Good man. But I do get some support from Trek Bicycles. Big E lately. Big E with Yo. some uh, Yoshimura products. Dude, Big E, big Eric Bartolis. Yeah. And yeah. the fine nice. folks at Yoshimura. Yeah. Friends hey, of ours. Uh, got me some, some cool mountain bike gear. Got me a stem. Got me some pedals. Awesome individual. Yeah. I don't know. I just love riding bikes, man. I'm a cyclist. I love it. Did you say yeah. you're a psycho? I no. Well, <laughs> it depends. It depends. Well, cyclists, that, cyclists. The headphones don't fit right. I don't you know, know what, I heard that wrong. You know what's well, awesome? I mean, people talk about being oh, you're BMX or you're BMX, but dude, there was there's there's time there's pictures of me in the in the early 80s where I'm freaking ripping on a road bike, you know, doing I'm doing you know road races and criteriums and uh, you hey, know, just have just racing. having a blast. Ever no one should uh, ever say that Stu Thompson. Is just a dude on a bike. Yeah, right. <sighs> but that I is am. just not it. You are but not. I, you are. No. You are a god. Yeah, I just you wish, that. I, I wish <laughs> I was. I, I do wish I was better at, at downhilling. But well, I know a guy that's on this podcast. It could probably help you with that. <laughs> you can fix well, that. No, I know no, a guy it, that could fix that. It, it's I know. Weird, I know one thing. He'll tell you the same thing he told me. <laughs> it's been the biggest, the, the big, the biggest or the worst thing he's ever told me was. Well, you ain't afraid to go fast. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but here, here's the story. Here's and that's story. the same with you. Okay. Well, yeah. we can keep going. But if all of a sudden I just disappear, it's because my phone is telling me low battery. Okay. <laughs> so so we're going to do, do a sign off now, but we'll, uh, the three of us will stay on. I'll just use it for the edit. Yes. Yeah. And we'll regroup uh, in Frogtown. Yep. Yes, for sure. W- w- this time I'll be wearing pants because I'm not wearing them Uh-oh. now. Oh, well, James, it's good talking with you. Yeah, look, I mean, for me, talking to a to a to a legend um, is amazing. I mean, I and I think the people that are, you know, li- going to listen to this thing too are going to be pretty interested in the stuff you have to say. I mean, a lot of them probably never even got a chance to meet you. You know, just yeah. I mean, I wish I could. I wish stuff. I could. Uh, I wish I could talk about all the current racers and, and what's going on in the Olympics and all the USAI world cups and all that stuff, but I don't follow it. So I don't know yeah. who's who, I don't know who's who in the zoo. Um, and when I'll watch a couple of YouTube videos or stuff like that, and I'm like, Oh shit, you know, like they're going fast, but you know, take off that six mile downhill start straight and let's, you know, <laughs> let's get on a, you know, a, a, a one meter or two meter start hill. And have some pedaling and, and going, but you know it's just not the way it is anymore. And I get nope. it, I get it. It's a different thing. Well, it might be different now, but fast is fast, strong is strong. Yeah, and winning is winning. Mm. And uh, in my mind, the biggest winner in BMX that I could ever think of 
It's right here. Nobody I remember that wore that number one plate better than anyone. You know what I say, Stu? The ratios and all that stuff doesn't matter. There, there's more races now versus there was less races then. Yeah. But there's, there's only one true first icon of any sport. David and Clinton. Yep. Yeah. I, yes, Dave Clinton. No. Yeah, but in my well. eyes, in my eyes, I was I was the man, and they and they were they were fast, and I wanted to beat them. Yep, and they were they were my competitors, and I may have made them faster. They made me faster. All the competitors made me faster. Just like going back to the seven other guys on the gate. You know, they're all competitors. Yep. They they make you who you are. You either shit or get off the pot. <laughs> one one could argue that Dave Clinton was the first, but I think, um, I don't know. For me, it's yourself because you you bridge the gap between the that time and I don't want to call it modern, but to, into my era when BMX really boomed. Yeah, like, yeah, and you were that guy, and so you were the to me you were the first true real icon of the sport the the, the first true figurehead appreciate um, it yeah oh man well i've earned you know you're as in. all as oz used to say the supreme commander of bmx there you go listen i'm gonna tell you one more time i really appreciate you doing the stuart it's, it's awesome people are really gonna really enjoy this man i hope hey. you're, you're gonna you're gonna, you'll probably edit it down to what a 10 minute show <laughs> is that a wrap yeah uh, goodbye awesome. me i'm just saying i'm friends with Stuart thompson i just want to yeah. point that out one more time <laughs> <laughs> oh, <It's> so good <laughs> so good Stu, thank you so much thanks eric take care all we'll right see buddy. you guys see all you guys in a couple weeks buddy you. see yep. you Brock. thank you yep. bye. bye bye hey dirty knobs we're asking you, uh, our friends, to make a donation on behalf of John Cruz to the Davis Finney Foundation. And that can be done at davisfinneyfoundation.org. That's D-A-V-I-S-P-H-I-N-N-E-Y foundation.org. Listen, your, uh, your gift makes a difference. To, and together, we're helping people live better and building healthier Parkinson's communities. So... Listen, on behalf of John Cruz and the three of us here at the Dirty Knobs, thank you, man. I appreciate it. Well, I hope you enjoyed that one, you bunch of dirty knobs. I'm going to send a box out to somebody who subscribes. So please do that. Subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. Comment if you have anything to say. We'd love to hear it. And uh, we will be back out here in two weeks with another one. And thanks to our sponsors, speaking of which, we are going to read some commercials to you now. Thanks for uh, showing our sponsors the love because they're showing it to us. Thanks again, and uh, we'll catch up to you soon. And then sing it out right now. All right. <laughs> Coming live and direct from the Colt Clubhouse in Santa Ana, California. Come on down and get all your BMX needs. We're giving away free air for your tires. <laughs> That's all I got, brother. That's great. That's great. All right. It's no. perfect. That's perfect. <laughs> Kenda, designed for your journey on the road, on the trail, or on the racetrack, you can count on Kenda quality. Our tires are engineered for performance and value across a wide range of interests and applications. See why Kenda is the right choice. It's your move. Imagine how bikes can lead to a healthier, more connected world. Bikes set us apart, free to explore and move, and experience our relationships with people and places like nothing else can. At Saris, we don't just imagine a more bikeable world. We're all in, making it happen. SR Sun Tour shares your passion of cycling. We are committed to giving you the highest level of service in the industry, along with products that hopefully will exceed your expectations. Serving riders is the cornerstone of our business. And we pride ourselves in doing it. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. Velocity Bike Park is the premier bike park for riders in Southern California. With 25 miles of world-class trails, obstacles, flow track, and races for mountain biking, gravel, and BMX. ABC, the American BMX company. 
bringing you brands like Race Inc., Cook Brothers, Botima, Box, Kuwahara, and BMX Action. Check them out at abmxc.com. Hey, BMXers, Todd Huffman here. I want to invite everyone to Angels Camp this September 9th through the 11th for the Frogtown Classic BMX Days. Three days of racing old and new bikes on the famous 40-year-old original downhill Frogtown track. No starting lights or recorded voice and no clips. Only loads of fun riding for all ages. Gary Turner Bike Show, Swap Meet, Vendors, and BMX Legends. Plus, it's free RV parking and camping available. Visit us at frogtownclassicbmxdays.com and find us on social media. ODI Grips, the world leader in grip technology. Home of the lock-on grip system. Check them out over at www.odigrips.com. Mega Design Group is a full-service marketing firm. They handle everything from logos to advertising to packaging. Having over 25 years' experience in the print and marketing fields, they can handle any hurdle. Check it out at megadesigngroup.com. Cool Stop Brake Pads. High performance bicycle brake pads since 1977. Check them out at coolstop.com. That's K O O L S T O P.com. Supercross BMX. What can we say? Our lives revolve around BMX. Founded in 1989 to build the ultimate BMX race frame, they've never strayed from that vision. Hey, for more details, check it out at supercrossbmx.com. Amy Grips is dedicated to using all of its manufacturing strengths, including engineering, research, and development, to successfully prepare for future growth while demanding that the quality of its products provide consumers with complete satisfaction. Making Grips since 1974. Check them out at amegrips.com. If you have a Senna cycling helmet, you know what it's like to ride connected. Senna got their start in communications for the motorcycling industry, where they're now a leader. Senna brought their same tech that goes into those helmet-to-helmet -helmet motorcycle communication systems into cycling helmets. Senna bike helmets have an integrated microphone and two speakers hidden right into the shell. Senna helmets connect together on a mesh or Bluetooth network so you can talk to your friends while you ride without shouting over wind noise, even if you're not side by side. That's super cool, especially in the trails. Senna helmets also pair with smartphones so you can listen to your playlist without blocking out ambient noise and you can take phone calls and even hear turn-by-turn -turn GPS directions. Check out the podcasts that we listen to. These are our friends. We wouldn't be here without their help. So give them a check out. And finally, you know, keep it dirty. I can go. I can go all night. I can go all night on this. <laughs> you can't go all night. That's not what I heard. No, no, no. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. My hey, my arms get tired, but I just, yeah. I just switch. I'm all right. I can go all night. Ambidextrous. Yeah. Ambidextrous. I can't breathe underwater. What are we talking about? Oh, God. See how it, this is where it's the, no. we're, we're in the hour now where it just starts going downhill. This is hey, this well, is I don't I don't know about you, but my glass is empty. Mine's that, never empty. That that glass is empty. The the teaser you posted with all of our pictures of us laughing. How'd you like that? Right, that was a. Per I thought the pictures were great. Yeah, it was good. The screenshots were good. Yeah, uh, hilarious, man. It's just funny. As I edit it, you know, I'm putting it together, and I'm sitting on the couch next to next to Sierra, and she's going. She hears me. I'm la I'm laughing out loud. She yeah. Goes, What's so funny? And I pull the ear earphones out, and she hears it, and she goes. Okay, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs>